Cerebral satire contains strong language and thoughts that may offend. If you are easily offended, don't fucking bother listening to it. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. I said goodbye. Hello, welcome to Street Besides, everybody. It is Friday, Friday. Everybody gets the party on Friday, except for me. What? Are you trying to be racist against me there? No, why was I trying to be racist against Mexicans? That voice you're putting on. What? Why would you say that? What was it? That accent you're on. That was just a singer. It was this type of song that we sing here in America, Wayne. Really didn't pick up on that. I just thought you were Mexican. No, I'm not trying... Anyway, this is Zuri Buzadaya. You are listening to That Was Wayne. This is Chris. Hello, everybody. Uh, Facebook.com slash Cerebral Satire. Uh, Cerebral Satire on Twitter. Cerebral Satire Gmail. Hashtag C Satire on Twitter for anything you guys want to see. That's all the shit we need to get to. Wayne, what's going on in your world this week, So I've literally just come in from popping into town. Oh, yeah? What were you doing uh, in town? I was just cashing some money in the bank. We went in the noodle bar. Then, uh, uh, is that like a Japanese place or something? Yeah, Chinese. Chinese noodle bar. Okay, that sounds cool. I like noodles. And um, I went in there. I ordered um, beef curry, and they come back with black bean. Okay. Beef black. Fucking awful. That's not what you ordered, obviously. So, um, <laughs> so what are you doing? Well, I ate it. But <laughs> I, I think she got how pissed off I was because when she went to go and get the spring rolls and stuff, she come back. And she went, that is what you ordered, weren't it? And she was Eastern European, so that was Polish. So was, that is what you ordered. <laughs> and so, I just sort of said, yes, but it's all. But why, why did you not say, why did you not say anything? I would have said something. Put up with it. No, you don't put up with it, Wayne. You don't pay for what you don't, you don't pay for what you don't get. What the, what, that doesn't make any sense. She obviously knew she does. So yeah. Like I said, you have a face like fun. <sighs> Dude, you just gotta you gotta speak up for yourself, man. You can't just let people just give you whatever you want at a restaurant. If you're paying for the fucking meal, get what you want. Go right in the end. <laughs> so you just go to any restaurant and you just order anything and they'll just you know, whatever they bring you is fine, that's eh, fine. Whatever. I was really in the mood for a curry though. The thing. So then why did you say something? Because was it my fault? It's, you know, not her fault I've got a stupid accent. No, you don't have a stupid accent. She has a stupid accent. And the point of going to a restaurant is to be or be able to order whatever you want on their menu. If they do not give you what you want on the menu, they need to give you what you want on the menu. Ironically, I can normally do Oh, this fucking hell. Because normally oh. I just leave change, whatever. Or I go a note higher and leave a tip. And you guys are shit for tippers, man. You guys are awful tippers. And... So basically, the food come to like twenty five D. Yeah. That's so why I just left thirty, quid, which is you know, bigger tip than I normally fucking leave. <laughs> and such a fucking. Why did I tip when I got the didn't get the food I wanted? No, I agree with that. You tip bad if you didn't get the food you wanted, but you also should have said something that you didn't get the food you wanted. Another ten minutes. Oh my god, Wayne, dude, you just paid for food. You just flat out paid for food you did not order. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> What what else did you guys do in town? That was it. Cash money in for what? Wow, oh, to the bank. What I won last night. Did you see it? Yeah, yeah, I saw it, but the audience didn't. Oh right, sorry. <laughs> I see what you're doing now. You're painting the picture with a brush. Yeah, I'm it? trying to explain, trying to get you to explain what exactly you were cashing money in for. Oh well, no, we just had a night at the dogs, and I come away with rather than losing a couple hundred quid, I come away with over a hundred. No. How much did you take to? How much did you put in initially? Well, no, I took two hundred with me and come okay. away with three hundred and thirty-five. So. Hey, opa, that's good. Don't you I feel got 
there was 13 races, I picked six winners. That's pretty good, Wayne. Seven if you include Claire's one. She only but, bet one? So No, she only bet fucking three races, and one of them, I actually stole 10 quid off her and put a bet <laughs> on, and she won it. So I count that as actually seven winners, because that certainly fucking knows. I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, that's what's the st- do you know what the statistic is on just dog racing in general? Like, how likely it is for you to actually pick a winner? That's one in six, isn't it? Well, no, I mean, like, let's just say, again, you you watch 13 races. You won seven of So you won seven of them. So I tend to find it coming batches because yeah. there's days when I can fucking win like last night. And then there'll be other days where I can't pick a fucking winner for Toffee and they're last every time. It don't matter if you go for the favorite, mid favorite, you know, anything. You just can't do nothing. It comes in fucking bad. Ridiculous. Don't you feel bad for the dogs? No, they love it. If you actually watch it, like when they're done at the end and they like drop the hair off the side, uh-huh. that they shoot around. Mm-hmm. They fucking their tails are wagging. They're jumping up and down. They fu- they do actually love it. <laughs> they love it. The okay. only thing I did feel fo- feel sorry for is one. Um, pulled up halfway for a race and yet still tried to run. So it obviously popped a joint or ripped a muscle or something. And um, one of the blokes, trainers, whatever, had to run out and literally pick him up to stop him running. Obviously, more damage. Yeah. That's the time I feel a bit sorry is if they rip something, but then they just get retired, don't they? <laughs> does, does that mean they get shot in the head? No, it's not horse racing. <laughs> I don't fucking like horse racing. That's what wait what's the difference between horse racing and dog racing there's like nothing there's like no difference in the two uh, horse racing's posh in it oh yeah i mean that's definitely uh, yeah of course and uh, you know here it's the it, it you know actually it was what it was like a month ago it was the kentucky derby or something like right yeah. i think it was like a month ago it was, it was the kentucky derby and we were at my sister's house watching it i really wasn't watching it. i was fucking i think i was playing video game. and they were watching it we, we all picked our horses whatever and it's, yeah, it's just a bunch of, I, I was asking all kinds of questions because I don't understand the oh, whole man. idea of them walking around in big ass fucking hats and fucking talking to, to each other and they get drunk at the fucking thing. All for one race. One race, Wayne. One race. So it's an great hat, all day right? event for one race. Where we went, you got a restaurant and that's like in a glass sort of out and you got proper three course meal table service they brought you drinks and bet and stuff all to the took your bets there and then um yeah that's what got, they do a horse racing too you sit there and you just watch it and it's like every fucking 15 minutes you get a race and it's done like boom 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 like that where fucking horse race is just so drawn out it's pointless just pointless yeah also <laughs> i don't understand well i mean it's just like it's just like dog racing i don't understand why you don't understand it it's just like dog racing you got six dogs to look at the stats and think and look what traps that they run good in and stuff. But that's easy. Fucking, you got twenty something horses. That's just fucking pick, you know? that's There's no skill behind that. What's the skill behind dog racing? No, well, I can show you. There's <laughs> loads of different factors you've got to analyze. Like what? Give me an example. So I'm I'm claiming that there's no difference between dog racing and uh, horse racing. I'm claiming they're almost the exact same thing. Well, you've got the grades the dog run at. Yeah. So obviously if I'm used to running at a higher grade, it's a better dog. And sometimes I get put into a lower grade. So obviously that's a better dog in that grade. You've got the trapper scene, one to six. Does it like running on the inside or the outside? Because some dogs like running on the outside. Um, and then you've got, is it actually a fucking fast dog? You've got then, um, when was the last time at race? So you, oh, get, this- you get all this information from them? In a book. But yeah, they give you a book. So you're trusting this place that's taking your money to bet on to give you the proper, correct information? Well, they have to, by law. Otherwise, that's fraud. Also, I had the app, so... Oh, I had. Oh, yeah, the app is different. Yeah, why would why would I think that there would be a line yeah, I've on got the race, app? I've got race and post app as well, so I was going between the two. I mean, I, I mean, I can't argue with you. You were successful. So, I mean, I consider that successful. You know, you start out with 100, you walk away with 326 or whatever it was. That's pretty successful. You just said successful. Successful? Yeah, what was that? I guess I need to have some sex. I don't know. Um, so what about uh, what about that uh, last last time last week we recorded? You were playing roulette before we got on the air. Yeah. So you were up a uh, eleven hundred, I think I saw right. Yeah. So 
you and I said before you got on the air, Claire was screaming at you to, to bank it. And then you said you, you were saying, I want to burn it before we get on the air. So what happened? I got it to 2000, lost a grand, and then I cashed out. So, <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know if people laugh at that. It's still a grand more than I had last week. I've actually had a really good week for money, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, Wayne. But you can't live You can't live week to week, buddy. You got to – <laughs> the whole point about gambling is that it makes you feel great when you win. But when you lose, that's the bad part. It's fine. But you don't consider yourself a loser when you lose. Like – you, what was that thing you were up like? You were up like twelve, twelve thousand or fifteen thousand dollars at one point. You lost it all. You were gonna go to America. Yeah. And then I whittled it away to like two thousand. Then I. Yes. So that's what I mean. You think you're actually up over the lifetime of your gambling career? Do you actually think you're up? I'd like to think I'm about even. <laughs> so nowhere. So just nowhere. You got nowhere. I'm just not. I, the only gambling I like to do is play, I like to play cards, but even even we can't we can't do that over the internet over here. Like it's 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 illegal to to you actually. Can't live on over there. We can do. It's like called virtual gambling, but it's um. Uh, I don't. Slot. No, I I mean I don't know about slots, but I, I'm talking about poker. So like, play Texas Hold'em over the internet. You can do that, but it's like for fake prizes or something like it there's laws uh, there's laws that actually you can't actually put money down on it and then get money back i think it's state by state though so like if you're in vegas obviously vegas pretty much allows anything at this point except for the county of Ve the city of vegas doesn't allow prostitution outside of the city of vegas there's a county that that allows prostitution so if you go to vegas I think you can pretty much gamble online. Like you can stay at your home and gamble online. Um, but I don't know if it's legal anywhere else. I know it's not legal here in South Carolina. It's not. I know that for sure. It just isn't. It just isn't. And they don't. It, one main. The main reason is because they can't tax it. They can't find a way to tax it. Um, All our betting sites are based in um, Jersey, which is. Jer Jersey? Yeah. Or yeah, it is Jersey, yeah. Jersey. So, <laughs> okay. Why, uh, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at the fact that it's, we, for us, everything's, everything's Jersey is New Jersey and that we stole it from you and we named, we put a new in front of it and just claimed it as ours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm laughing about. <laughs> everywhere which fucking America is stolen. Yeah, everywhere. Pretty much everywhere America is stolen. Um... Uh, not only that, see what else is going on. Um, uh, nothing really. I mean, la last week was my first week in my store officially, so well, it went okay so far. I'm getting ready. To oh, you're getting ready to go on vacation. That's cool. The dog's getting ready to go down to, to Georgia with my, with his uh, dog grandparents, uh, Michelle's parents, and um, dog grandparents. Yeah. Dog grandparents. I mean, we're not gonna have kids, so I might as well go with her parents. Uh, we had a lined up. We had a, we had a dog sitter lined up for the whole weekend or the whole week uh, while we were in Florence. But obviously, we moved, so now that can't happen. Um, the the chick was gonna stay at our place with with Closter, and now we can't do that. So when we moved, we tried to get one of my sisters. That dog you were looking after before. That was her dog, yes, yes. That was her dog that we were looking after before uh, was this chick's dog. And then she was going to come over to our house, stay at our place, and watch Chloe for a week. Um, but oh, now, obviously, that can't happen. You didn't get your fucking favor back. I know. I know. Trust me. And she keeps posting pictures of that awesome pit bull, and I love that dog so much. Oh, my God. Anyway. So now our babysitter went up in smoke. So we came, when we moved down here, we were trying to line up uh, a friend of the family's, uh, one of their kids, to come over and stay with her for the week. And she couldn't do it. So our last resort was when Michelle's mom came up uh, to help us unpack, which she really didn't do. Although she did help us get... she I know. She did help us get my car back from Florence, so that was awesome of her. But uh, I told her to ask, I told uh, M to ask her um, 
hey, can we can you watch Chloe for us for a week? Because we we got nothing. I didn't want to border. I didn't want to border Wayne. I, every all my family was telling me to border. I didn't want. I didn't want to do it. Bored her. Bored her. Oh right, I thought you said abort her. No, bo- as in boarding, as in put her in a loud, noisy animal hospital somewhere around here and board her. Okay, as long as you don't put her down. Remember no, I'm not going to abort her. <laughs> I'm going to board. They were wanting me to board her. Uh, I didn't want to because she was she's a rescue. So if we board her, there's a good possibility she's actually going to think that You've dumped her. Yeah, yeah. Is that we're never gonna come back for her? And I don't want her to think that. I don't. I'm a. I don't know, man. I'm a. That's see. That's the difference between cats and dogs. But cats, if you drop a cat off somewhere, cat don't give a fuck. A cat don't care. It's shocked that it's somewhere new. But other than that, it doesn't care. It doesn't really care. It doesn't care about you. It it would gladly slit your throat in the middle of the night. Um. But you're not a. You're not a anything person, are you? You don't. You don't. You don't. You're a cat person. I always had cats. Why don't you have a cat now? Because that'll get run over. Because it'll get run over. Yeah, I live near Main Road. So then, why would you let it out? What you live over here. We've had this discussion before. Yeah, I never understood that about you guys and cats. Cats stay in cats stay indoors mostly for for Americans. They don't they really, really. Yeah, they don't really go out. They don't really go out. Every once in a while, you'll see somebody walking a cat on a leash. That's about it. But with. But to be honest, if we we're where we are now, we would get a dog because that you would take it out and that'd be safe. Probably. But if I lived in a village, then I'd have a. Cat. Yeah. Okay. I just, I just, I just can't do that to her. And anyway, so what's going to happen is that M next week is uh, no M this week <laughs> at the end of this week is going to take her uh, down to uh, her 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 mom and dad's place. And she's going to drop her off and she'll be happy because they've got a big backyard and they've got another dog to play with and she'll be ecstatic for um, a week or so. And then we're going to, oh, and then they're going to bring her back. Thank God. Uh, So we don't have to go and get her. It's a six and a half hour drive from the beach to Atlanta. Oh my God. It was a long drive. It's another three hours back here. So quite a bit of drive. Anyway, I'm hoping to have a good time. We got a big house at the beach. We got the beach. We got a pool. We got all the fam coming over. Where uh, each each person's each uh, essentially f- type of family is going to take a night cooking. Um, so every single night you have a different family cooking, and then um, with the amount that we put down the house, we have enough money left over to buy food for breakfast and lunch for the entire week. So you literally don't have to go out. Plus, there's really nowhere to go out in Oak Island. Who's the nights that you're not looking forward to? There's always one night where you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh there's a night that my uncle will normally like goes out and buys food out or whatever or my nana's cook my nana's cooking used to be awesome and it's not so good anymore <laughs> so <laughs> she usually burns everything and it's half cooked and because she, she doesn't have any taste buds left pretty much so um <clears throat> it's just not it's not good there's those couple of nights, like my uncle Will usually goes out and buys food. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that here because I don't know how many places are around this island. Because from what I understood from uh, a couple of customers of mine that came through, I uh, said there's not much to do on Oak Island. So you might as well bring some shit with you because there's not much to do. So um, like the Walmart closes at like 11 o'clock or something. So we'll see what's going on. Uh, I don't I, – it's just – the idea of uh, uh, my uncle cooking or my uncle buying food's not bad, but cooking, uh, that's rough. I don't know, man. I don't know if I trust him cooking. I've seen his house. They're they're a bit of hoarders. So we'll see. I'll, I'll report. You know me. I'll report back and <laughs> tell you what happened during the whole trip. And this is the first time. This is the first time M's going to be around my family for um for a long period of time, a very long time. So. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. What do you? Th- that's it's a lot to deal with. My family's a big, 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 loud family all the time. So I don't know how well it's going to go over. Piss them off with Andy Wolf. <laughs> well, I mean, I told you that the, I, I had, haven't gets bored of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is a one aunt that I'm not allowed to talk to because actually, my brother-in-law now is not allowed to talk to her. I'm not allowed to talk to her because she's a bit soft in the head and. 
she's very very religious and we like to step on her toes just just that can go on a family holiday and be banned from talking to someone. Well, I wasn't first. I wasn't the first person banned from talking to her. My my brother in law Scott was, and then and then it was me. And yeah, then it, so you be gutted that you weren't the first. I I am a little bit upset that I wasn't the first. You're right. I am. <laughs> Let's go into our first story <laughs> before we get banned from this our own show. Cow grass. Pilgrims brought me because they need me. Farmers milk me and they feed me. People eat me. Children love me, although I don't know why. I eat all day. I sleep all night. I chew my cud. I have big eyes. I don't eat meat. I have big thighs. And wow, I am so fat. So, I'm a cow. I'm a cow. Look at me. Look at me. I'm a cow. I'm a cow. Look at me. Look at me. I'm a cow. I'm a cow. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> that was, I'm a cow song. I'm a cow. I'm a cow. Look at me. Look at me. I'm a cow. I'm a cow. Look at me. Let me. It's a, I'm a cow song. Uh, anyway, Wayne, did you know? Did you know, Wayne, that fucking Americans think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows? I. This is a stat that's quite often thrown around to my Americans. Looks. I can't see how it's physically true. Uh, okay. This is from iflscience.com. I fucking love science.com. If you go to the if you go to the innovation center for US dairy website, the top frequently asked question is, does chocolate milk come from brown cows? They answer it clearly and politely. Actually, chocolate milk or any flavored milk for that matter is white cow's milk with added flavoring and sweeteners. Unfortunately, this message does not appear to be sinking in with the America public as a survey commissioned by the center found that a whopping 7% of Americans still think that chocolate milk comes from directly from brown cows. If you multiply that, that's 16.4 million people nationwide who think that chocolate milk come from goddamn brown cows. You sound like when you read that out, the tongue twister. It's because I'm pissed. I don't. Oh, I'm no, seeing red no. right now. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck to say. Are, are, are we? Are, are, uh, 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 we we are dumb. We are dumb, dumb, dumb creatures, Wayne. We are dumb fucking monkeys. Anyone that doesn't believe in in in, in uh, evolution and science. Anyone that doesn't believe in evolution should read this study because this just proves that we're just fucking dumbass animals right here. Oh, it's brown. It must their milk must come out brown too. You're a fucking retard. I I just think that's one of those funny questions people ask as a joke. I don't think that's real. The nationally representative survey gets more alarming. Forty-eight percent of respondents admitted they weren't sure where chocolate milk comes from. If this is true across the nation generally, that would be astounding 154,000, no, 154 million potential voters who aren't confident enough to guess cows. Unfortunately, go ahead, go ahead. You used to you, think what? If you melt chocolate and mixed it with milk, you got chocolate milkshake, but it don't quite work like that. No, 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 that just makes chocolate milk. Does it but make you just get sort of weird lumpy milk well it's still chocolate milk there's still chocolate in the milk therefore chocolate milk Wayne. that's just chocolate milkshake what's the difference it's not what okay what used to melt milk used to melt chocolate down right yeah and put it in milk right i've, I've got to stress this is when i was a kid that's not a lot of reason <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you well i'm glad you did that and put it in milk right yeah i think okay. that used to make not a nice smooth um milkshake smoothie then, yeah well, I understand that because you're one, A, you're a kid. B, you're not all that smart. And C, it still makes chocolate milk. It just doesn't make a chocolate milk shake. So what's the difference between chocolate milk and milkshake? Uh, a milkshake. You're going to say your milkshakes are those fucking disgusting thick things. Yes, that's exactly the difference. <laughs> they're not oh, disgusting. Right. They're Over delicious. Here. Over here, it's basically... No, I suppose they're making more of an effort to brand thick shakes and chocolate milk, I suppose, yeah. But over here, we well, we sort of just class anything like flavoured milk as a milkshake. But Really? No, I suppose they are. 
Yeah, but they're making more of an effort to say that the thick ones are milkshakes. Milkshakes, and, and yeah, because because it is because a milkshake is usually ice cream, right? Ice cream yeah. and chocolate, and then you shake it up. You either stir it up or you spin it up or you sh- literally shake it up. Well, Nesquik is a milkshake, but that's Nesquik just powder. Is, no, that's chocolate milk. See, that's classed as milkshake. Yeah, here. see, that's that's chocolate milk. Like Nesquik, Yoo-Hoo, that's cho- it's all chocolate milk. It's a type of chocolate milk. I take it the same thing applies for uh, strawberry milk. Yes. Milk. <laughs> yes. It's... Butterscotch milk. Yes. Like a blizzard would be an ice cream treat. Uh, but a milkshake, actually a milkshake, I think is ice cream and milk. And chocolate, I think, is is what a milkshake is, because it adds. Because it's a little. Because a blizzard isn't isn't uh, a milkshake. It's considered a blizzard. You know what a blizzard I is? Dairy Queen. Fuck. I hate those fucking things oh. where you sit there and you get them, and you're thirsty, so you sip the straw, and it's so thick it doesn't go up the straw. <laughs> That's uh, that could be considered a frosty. Mm, frosty is slush puppies, isn't they? Frosty is what Wendy's has as a milkshake. It's like very, very cold milk. Like they get their milk super cold and then they put chocolate in it and then they serve it to you. Oh, that's a frost. That's considered a frosty. It's very weird around oh, here. Like, it don't come from a fucking brown cow. It does not come from. You're right, sir. It does not come from a brown cow. Unfortunately, this isn't. What nice. do they think of a brown cow then? What? Where do they think strawberry milkshake comes from? Or no strawberry idea. milk, sorry. I have no idea. And what comes from a black and white cow? You um, don't get grey milk, do you? It's grey milk. <laughs> you get racist because they're mixed. <laughs> Unfortunately, this isn't an isolated <laughs> incident. An isolated case of Americans being uninformed about where food comes from. A study in the early 90s found that 20% of adults didn't know that hamburgers were made from meat from cows. What? That can't. It's a real. A study in the early 90s found that 20% of adults didn't know that hamburgers were made from meat of cows. <laughs> to be honest, with a McDonald's pate, there's a very good chance there's never been a cow near it. <laughs> That's probably, you're probably true about that. Strangely, Innovation Center for U.S. Dairy Study also found that 37% of people secretly drank milk straight out of the container in the fridge. An extremely poor milk slash fridge etiquette. I love drinking milk out of the container. Yeah, I do, because Claire can't have it because she's got drippy guts. <laughs> Um, so I just go to town. It's just my milk. I'm the only one that has it. Yeah, we know you drink milk and masturbate, so it's fine. Another 20, 29% of use their children as an excuse to buy chocolate milk so that they can drink it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> You're an adult. You can literally eat anything you want whenever you want. Uh, I was listening to a podcast earlier, and like the justifications people have of buying and eating like sugary cereal. Guess what? You're an adult. You can buy and eat any sugary cereal you want. Okay? Live your wildest childhood fantasies out every fucking morning for all anyone gives a fuck. They do not. Please don't use your children as an excuse to buy sugary cereal and chocolate milk because you're an adult. You paid for the shit. Can you remember the time that you found out that cereal wasn't actually very healthy? Because when you're young, they make it look healthy and fun, don't they? Yeah. Um, the adverts. I mean, like, like I kind of, I kind of full of vitamins, and yeah. then when you get older, it turns out it's like the the silent killer of cereal. Yeah. <laughs> the silent killer. They do make a big deal about it, don't they? Uh, my thing has always been. I kind of knew because my mom and dad. I mean, like we were really poor growing up. So we really didn't, we really couldn't buy the expensive cereal. So we always bought Honey Nut Cheerios, but we would take the Honey Nut Cheerios and we would put four or five scoops of sugar onto the Honey Nut Cheerios to make them taste better. <laughs> so it just, it was just the fact that the, the sugary cereal was more expensive. That was the problem. But <clears throat> surely Honey Nut Cheerios are sugary as fuck anyway. Correct. Cause they have honey on them. Correct. You're but my be- mom always said that they were good for us comparatively to all the sugary cereals, which they are not. They're just as bad. And then you're just going to add <laughs> add sugar to it. Yes. And I'm not talking about just like a scoop of sugar for a whole bowl of 
of cereal. I'm talking like if she let us, it, but she wasn't paying attention, we would put like three or four scoops of sugar in our Basically, bowls of cereal. When you see the bottom of the bowl, you had a spoonful of this sloppy yes, sugar. Yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah, well, I used to have plain cornflakes instead of Frosties and done exactly the same thing. <laughs> and you made them your own Frosty type. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The milk so good at the end, though. <laughs> it is. It's very delicious. Their survey over 1,000 adults also reports that 95% of Americans have some kind of cheese in their fridge. We're hoping that they will conduct a follow-up study into whether Americans think blue cheese comes from blue cows. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love science.com. Is there anything else you can think of that maybe people are confused about? Do you think people like know where turkey burgers come from or something? Or I mean, that's pretty plain. And it's pretty plain. In general, I can't think of anything else where people would think, you know, uh, I just, it's, that's, that's the most insane thing I've ever heard, Wayne. Oh, I'm really kind of. No, let's move on to our next story. <laughs> Fucking brat. Is one of Wayne's favorite. This is from I fucking love science.com as well, Wayne. A lot of science today. I like it. I'd like to see you went far for the stories. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just click from one article to the other. Testosterone injections cause patients' penis to double in length, Wayne. What? So is this like, so if I wanted to get my penis bigger, I could go there and get it done, or was it an accidental side effect? Um. Well, let's find out. Uh, to be filed under, don't try this at home, a, a man in Pakistan has managed to double his penis size by taking testosterone injections for nine months. The 34-year-old man was treated for a condition in which his body does not produce enough hormone, meaning his penis had not developed as normal. The man presented himself to Khan University Hospital in Karach for treatment. He initially sought help for the fact that he could not grow a beard, armpit hair, or pubic hair, in addition to the fact that he felt that he was having fewer morning, uh, fewer morning erections than would to be expected. In tur- it turned out to be uh, he also had a very small penis, equivalent to a size of a 12-year-old and absent ejaculations. So this, this guy was in trouble, Wayne. So he like, goes like fewer erections in the morning than one would expect. <laughs> How many is he expected? Surely it's just a thing. Like if you get aroused, it's not a, a set amount in the morning. I mean, I think you know. Uh, well, I had one this morning, so that's always good, right? Well, yeah, but it's not like <laughs> it's not like you have a penis chart where you wake up. Oh, this yeah, one was a. Uh... Like... Shit, I've only hit six this month. I should really be up at like twenty. I'm in serious trouble. <laughs> or, or like, if something don't really arouse you, then you're not gonna get a hard on. Or like, sure. t- t- today was was half mask, half masked, and oh wait, the other day was completely flaccid and it looked like a belly button. <laughs> you know, like you you rate your erections based on how good how how big your dick is that day. I, I, you can't beat the semi, can you? Yeah, no, like, you can't. No. Like, you're still flaccid. Yeah, but not it... really aroused, but you look like a fucking bee. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, like I'm not erect. I could get bigger than this, but look at it already. Exactly. <laughs> can't beat the semi. <laughs> no, you're walking around. You feel like a. You feel like a man. Feel like you got. Yeah. A, feel like you got a baby's arm between your legs. You're like, yeah, I'm the not man. Not even hard Look. <laughs> Yeah, I was well, I was trying on uh I was trying on new shorts the other day cuz my shorts don't fit me anymore cuz I'm fucking fat. And I don't know what it was. It was just that day I was having a good penis day and it just was the semi erect um just hanging out big boy. So every time M came in to look in the to look at my to look at my shorts, see if she liked them, see if they fit on me. She was like, "What is with your with your crotch today?" I was like, I- I don't know. It's just I'm just having a good day. Stop talking about it. The boys are out the barracks. Yeah, it's just it's just a good day today. 
Um, he was diagnosed with a condition known as hypodiasm. Hy- which is also hypogonism. Known as- which is also known as what? Little bitch syndrome. <laughs> Little bitch syndrome. Which is a simple term to uh, is the inability to produce enough testosterone. Although it is unusual for a man to be diagnosed with the condition so late in life, the condition can arise during fetal develop fetal development, in which case the genitals of the genetic genetic male infant can end up developing to look like a vagina. Uh, can be yeah, ambiguous. Say what? So is he a type of hermaphrodite? No, no, he still got a penis. He just had a small penis, a very small penis. That looked like a clunge. Now you can, now you can. It says here you can. Uh, it can look like a vagina, or it can be ambiguous, or it can simply underdevelop in general. Is the three things that it can happen if you have this hypogonadism. Nailed it. Uh, the condition can also occur in later in life, and if this happens before or during puberty, it can lead to a lack of growth of facial and body hair, reduced size of the penis and testes, and even f- and, e- and even a failure of voice to drop. <laughs> so you're walking around with a small penis, and you talk like this. Talk well, like Michael Mickey. Jackson. Talk like oh, maybe maybe Michael Jackson had this problem. Michael, <laughs> Michael, come play with me, blanket. Uh, the patient, the the patient, the patient, as described in the British Medical Journal case reports, was displaying a number of these symptoms. After initially assessing him for his concerns about his hair, the doctors found that his penis was only five centimeters. That's one point nine inches long when stretched. When stretched, fucking hell. About the same length as a pubescent boy, his testes were also around half the size they should have been for a man his age. After testing his testosterone levels, they found them to, to be 5, 55.99 nanograms per deciliter, far below an average male's uh, in the region yeah, of awful, yeah, 200, <laughs> 270 I've per never deciliter. never even heard that unit measurement before. Uh, deciliter? Yeah, it's a unit of measurement. I don't know what it is. Uh, to try and the uh, to try and address this, they placed him on a course of hormone injections over a period of nine months. At the end of his treatment, they found that his penis length had almost doubled to the size of nine point five centimeters, or three and three point seven inches long. That's still really. Uh, and his testy size has also doubles to uh, twenty millimeters. The doctors think that. While there were not many cases of men waiting so long to be diagnosed to such a condition, this patient is probably not the only one. Either way, I think it's safe to say that unless you actually have the condition, it's probably not something you should try at home. Because if you do too much testosterone, Wayne, they go, the, your balls get small, right? I mean, that's what happens with the weightlifters. Oh, so, no, that's steroids, isn't it? Oh, is that steroids? Yeah, you're right. That's steroids. But I thought that's what that's wait wait that's what happens when you do that that's what that's what steroids have in it it's testosterone, right? Am I wrong about that? So you just can't go shooting up yourself with fucking testosterone. To yeah, do don't it. don't do that. Just imagine the hair that would come out of your body, though. Oh my god, I already have enough hair. Can you imagine you'd like, you? You'd be like fucking Chewbacca. <laughs> Chew Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what's happened to Wayne? He's been shooting up with testosterone because he's got a little dick. I'm trying to look up steroids. There, see what's see what's in steroids. Uh, anabolic steroids side effects. Acne. Uh, the word has been different meaning. Steroids are chemicals, often hormones, that your body make naturally. They help you. They help your organs, tissues, and cells do their jobs. You need a healthy balance of them to grow and even make babies. Steroids can also refer to male man-made uh, medicines. The two main types of st- steroids are cortisone steroids and anabolic steroids, or anab- anabolics for short. So it's a it's a mess of it's a mess of things that help you grow and develop. And then once you take steroids, your body says, "Oh, you don't need this anymore. We'll stop giving this to you." And that's when your balls start shrinking and your dick. Is that official or was that your theory? That was my official slash theory. Because <laughs> I really? made the last bit up. 
that sounded awesome, but then I just thought well, there was absolutely no fact behind that. But yeah, I just made I, that. I just I, made, that's good theory. I like it. I just made that last beat up. Um, so I mean, Wayne, would you let doctors shoot if it if it doubled your penis size, would you let doctors shoot that shit into your penis for nine months? Is that where he was actually having it injected? So he couldn't just have it in his arm or not? He was actually having no, it. No, he said it actually, they actually injected it in his penis. Oh, I think I'll just wear a little dick to be honest. <laughs> yeah, but a one inch dick, dude? He's, if he's going around with a fucking vagina bit and with a high pitched voice yeah. and he ain't got an air on his mm. body, he don't really need to worry about women, to be honest, does he? <laughs> but he wants to. He wants to worry about women. He wants to be able to... I mean, it's India, let's be honest. He wants to be able to rape somebody. Whoa, your <laughs> hatred of that country is amazing. It's it a shocked- shithole. It's a shithole country. And you're based up purely on Top Gear. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> top Gear. And, uh, every once in a while, I'll see a Vice report on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next story. <laughs> Some of them are hairy some of them are bald some are kind of scary and this is what they're called vagina Say is yeah you've you've not branched very far again you've stayed with giant genitalia and you've used yet another old song yes another old song and genitalia man the hits just keep on coming wayne uh this is from broadlyvice.com so a uh, little 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 something different um so i'm just this is a list or a little song a little article by zeng xing on broadlyvice.com and this is about uh what the things uh the things women have hidden in their vaginas wayne we had done a story once about a woman that hid a bottle of whiskey up there didn't correct we? yep i'm out of them <laughs> we've done a lot of stories about women stealing things by shoving things in their vagina uh by the whiskey um some apples and oranges these these things are a lo- these these things i'm going to read to you are a little bit different okay um, it starts out of uh, Killer Fangs, Wayne. Killer Fangs. The earliest known uh, moft of women hiding killer objects in their genitalia comes from the form v- from the form of vagina dante or tooth vagina. In the late 20th century, arthropologist uh, <laughs> Varian Elwin, um, that a legend is known over a wide area of North America. It's a legend in Samoa and among Anu and the Kiwai uh, known it as a dream. It's also been reported from the Nigeria of Manipur in India. Japan's famed festival Steel Phallus has its origins in Anua legend and some tooth demon who hid in the vagina of a young girl until it was defeated by an iron phallus. I didn't take any of that in. That was like a load of hoodoo, voodoo. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. So let me clear this up. So there is a, uh, uh, essentially there is a folk tale that a demon crawled into a woman's vagina and teeth were known to be in the vagina. Okay. Like, like they do, yeah. And it was defeated by an iron dick. Okay. Okay. Now. That bottle of whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Now, in India, an Indian folktale, a man has sex with an upper class girl after he finds her stealing cucumbers from his field. His dick is immediately <laughs> chewed off by her fanged vagina through his brother in law's wife, soon frightens her into re reattaching the penis the two of them then pull every 
out every single tooth in the attacker's uh, attacker's vagina with a piece of string. Shortly afterwards, the farmer and the now toothless girl fall in love and run off, which there goes no, no accounting for taste. What the fuck? Uh, what is it with? I don't know what. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. Why? Why is there such a story about a woman being raped or trying to be raped by a man, and then the woman falls in love with the rapist? What is it with all these teeth? I don't know. Artists licensed, Wayne. Artists hide objects in their vaginas all the time. And the one of the earliest instances can be traced back to Caroline, Carol, Caroline Sinisman's 1975 performance piece, Inter Scroll. In the front of the audience, Sh- Shini Man pulled a thin <laughs> scroll from her vagina. Yeah, I know I'm bad at reading. I don't know how to say that fucking shit. You know what? Here, let me get Google. Google to me. Normally, when you like you proofread them and then try and have a good go at the words, you really didn't try this hard. No, I did not. I did not at all. Here, let me see what, how to pronounce this thing. Sh- Shini Man. Aww, Google Reader's been discontinued. You saying Shin- Google don't Shin- read stuff back? How do you pronounce that shit? No, it won't. It won't I can't get it to say anything. Shinee Man is what we're going by. Pulled a, thrin, a thin scroll from her vagina and read out loud from it. More recently, an Australian artist, Casey Jenkins. See, now that's a proper name. Knitted for oh yeah we read it we read about this chick knitted for twenty eight days the average length of a single menstrual cycle in an artist gallery the wool pulled out of her vagina she later died the hateful internet comments um, she received with her own menstrual blood what is this <laughs> man ants just throw up a little bit I know locked and loaded Wayne. Archer is not the only American woman to attempt to conceal a weapon in her immediate area. Only two months ago, police in Waco, Texas, found a loaded handgun in 31-year-old Ashley Cecilia Constantine's vagina. She was also charged with possession of meth, <laughs> though this was, not lo- this was not located in or around her crotch. In 2003, Christina Harris attempted to hide a loaded five-shot single revolver after being stopped by police in a parked car in Oklahoma. During the strip search, police officers found a wooden and metal item sticking out from her vagina area and located two <laughs> two vags of meth lodged between her buttocks. Um, uh, that's That's weird. That's every American's dream woman, that is. And then, I mean, there's just countless of drug smuggling things on here. I mean, literally countless. I mean, just countless drug smuggling. Um, This is the science of it, Wayne. Shoving things up your vagina can lead to a host of nasty side effects, collectively known as foreign object vagetitis. This may include itching, discharge, or pain. It's not a condition reserved for adult women. 2007 edition of the pediatric... No, I don't want to read that. I don't care about that. I don't want to read that. Why? It was It was about a four-year-old girl. I don't want to read that. I don't want to read that. I don't want to read that. Yes, I know what, little boys and little girls explore their bodies. I'm not reading that. Okay. Anyway, Wayne, again, if you had a vagina, what would you do with it? Not stick fucking handguns and meth up myself. <laughs> why? Don't, I know. Why don't? Why don't we stick handguns and meth up ourselves now? Well, I mean, would you? I mean, it's called the coin purse. Would you treat it like a coin purse? Coin purse. I mean, it's the nickname for a vagina is called the coin purse. Never heard that one. You've never heard that one? No. Nope. Yeah, it's called the coin purse. Would you? That's quite a clean sort of nickname for. Do you think honest. that? Do you think that came from women sticking coins up their vagina during the Wild Wild West? Is that true? Was that another thing you made up? No, no. I said I asked you a question. Mm. I'm a, I'm looking it up. What do you think? I know that I can keep stuff in there because like Claire has clinched when I'm in there before, and I, they got quite good fucking grip there. Well, um, if you look up the coin purse purse vagina online, there's actually coin purses that look like vaginas. Their wallets, their vagina zippers. Let's see. Uh, you go into a shop, you go to pay for your shop, and you pull out a vagina from your pocket. 
<laughs> Urban Dictionary uses it as uh oh a coin purse is actually um uh is actually the balls they say. Testies, nutsack, scrot. Would you shave my coin purse, Stewie from Family Guy says. Oh, I've really? never heard that. I've never. Have you ever heard your balls to be referred I've to as a coin purse? Never heard any genitalia being referred to as a, as coin, a coin purse. purse. That's weird. Hmm. Okay. I do um, like the thing. I mean, what, what what would you keep up there, Wayne? If you had a vagina, what would you keep up there? What do they need to keep more? Fucking Claire's got hundreds of handbags. She can't <laughs> even go out. Like, literally popped into the town for the bank and for food. I said, you don't need your handbag. Yet she takes a fucking handbag. Why? So why do they need another place to put stuff? I, I agree. I agree. Why don't they just use their... Why, why is it not okay for them to use... Do they have a vagina access ready? Other than the fact that, you know, they get infections. I guess that's bad. <laughs> but other than that... I mean, I... I, I I, I don't know why they carry around so much shit to begin with, Wayne. I'll say that. Honestly, did you... I'm tempted to go over there and get the handbag and let's go for it. All right, go ahead. Go. Go grab it. I'll go and get it. Yeah, go get it. Let's go let's go through it. Let's see what's in see what's in a regular handbag just rather than their vagina option. Ugh. Me... Right, here we go. Let's see what she's got in here. She's got a little coin purse that is empty. <laughs> She's got her own coin purse that's empty? Well, I mean, her vagina's... Uh, nope, I lie. She's got two. <laughs> She's got a water flask. A water flask? Yep. Three Tesco's plastic bags, because they now charge 5p over here per bag, so she carries them around. I can understand that. Uh, she's got four packs of tissues. Four? This is immense. I should really be taking a picture of it. <laughs> she's got the dog program from last night, which is probably just laziness that's, that she's. That's yeah. That's. There. I mean, do you have the dog program from last night? No, she's got mine in there. I give them to. Her. She's got the handbag. You give her. You sit there. I know. I give. I give. I give M all my shit. I give whenever we go like to the uh, to the movies or whatever, and she's got her, she's got her purse with her. I just give her all my shit. Like I give her. My everything. I just give her my wallet, my phone, anything that I, it's my pockets. I, I hate sitting down with stuff in my pockets, so I just give her everything. All right. She's got body shop, vitamin E, face cream. Vitamin E? Why would you have vitamin E? Cream de jour. Nice. Um, she's got Centra Ben cream, which is for problematic, dry, sensitive, or eczema prone skin. Because <laughs> Claire always has something wrong with her. She's got um, Diflam spray, which is a uh, benzodiazepine hydrochloride. What what is that? Uh, it's, um, like it's a... a spray for your throat for the treatment of painful and sore mouth and throat <laughs> conditions. <laughs> She's blowing guys at work to sprays her throat. She's got um, oh, this is good. She bought this in Yarmouth yesterday. It's a little camera key ring that when you look and you click the button, there's naked men. <laughs> I think she forgot that this is in here. <laughs> Why would she buy that? I don't know. A pair of sunglasses. We've still got more to go. A lolly. <laughs> a lolly? Why would she have Why? Is she 80? She needs a lollipop in her purse? Um, Rose and Almond Isle Vaseline, which is quite interesting because <laughs> she keeps saying how nut allergic she is when she's rubbing <laughs> Almond Isle on her lip. <laughs> Um, Eternity by Calvin Klein, Smints, and about fucking, I can think I can see about what, two packs of Tic Tacs. Well, I mean, if you did, if you had her mouth, you would, you would have two packs of Tic Tacs on you at all times. Oh, here's a good bit, hand spray, a sanitary oh, towel, in case she gets emergency gush. Yeah, I get that, in case she gets emergency gush. Oh, she's got rescue or remedy oil here. Have you ever had that? No, what is that? What's a rescue remedy oil? That's that shit that calms you down. You put a drop in your mouth and that calms you down. If you get nerves, like if you're going for a job interview and shit. Is that real? Does that really work? To use, put four drops into a drink. Oh, this is the hardcore shit. This isn't just the spray. <laughs> Does that work? What is it like? Is it like liquid Xanax? No. <laughs> 
Wayne's, yeah. Wayne's like, I don't get nervous. Oh, grape alcohol, approximately 27% volume. Oh, so it just gets you drunk. Flower extracts of rock rose, clem- clematis, star of Bethlehem, and cherry plum. So it's just it's just alcohol. It just gets you boozed. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put four drops of that shit in some water. Yeah, it'll give you, it'll take the edge off for the day. What about if you down the fucking thing? Uh, that'll probably kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good way to calm. He's like, oh, yeah. fuck. Everything's out okay now. I've got to get it back in. Yeah, you know? now you're going to get It's not like she had it in any type of order, dude. Well, no, not with a penis fucking camera. Exactly. <laughs> So, um, I think guys, I think if guys had vagina pockets or something like that on their bodies, they would put pl- practical things in it, like their cell phones and uh, wallets and shit that uh, like we use on a daily basis, rather than this that all that random shit. What did do you think she uses any of that on a daily basis, Wayne? I don't know. Like with me, it's like if I can get out of the house, pop and do whatever I've got to do, and come back with as little on me as possible, then I do it. But it's like, she won't leave the house without a bag. Yeah. And that, like, it's not only that, it could be like, f- how many bags does she own? Like seven or eight? There's two on the sofa alone. Yeah. <laughs> There's two on the sofa? So you could have at least four or five more in her, like, in her closet. She's got all different ones. She's got big one for big day out. Yep. She's got a little one that she's got a, like a little satchel thing that goes around that she can go on like theme park rides with because it's a bit more smaller does she like, have like a wallet to put all of her cards and stuff in that goes in the purse no she's just got a purse oh she just has the one purse okay well she's in she has fucking god knows how many coin bags in each fucking bag <laughs> she's got two one of them was empty both of them are fucking empty i'm gonna have a look actually yeah there's nothing in there <laughs> Well, Wayne. I mean, let's be honest, man. We're not we're not the greatest ladies' men in the world, so I mean, it's not like it's not like we have any choice about who we date. <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> that was cerebral satire for this week, everybody. Everyone's going on vacation. Everyone's had headed out. Have a great, great summer, everybody. I mean, we're not we're not skipping any weeks or anything. We got we got lots lots of good shows coming up for you guys. So enjoy it. Hit us up on Twitter, hashtag C Satire at Cerebral Satire on Twitter. Email us. God, for God's sake, somebody fucking send us an email about what you like, what you don't like. Stop with the spam. Sign me up for fucking bullshit. It's uh, at Cerebral Satire. That's Cerebral Satire at Gmail dot com is what it is. And as always, you guys can see us on Facebook. Interact with us on Facebook. Lots of people do. It's facebook.com slash Cerebral Satire. That was your show this week, Wayne. What do you think? What'd you learn? My wife carries a load of shit. His wife carries a load of shit. All right. Well, everyone's wife carries a load of shit, Wayne. Everybody have a great week. Have a good summer. Bye. Say goodbye, Wayne. Bye, Wayne. Now the working classes are obsolete. They are surplus to society's needs So let them all kill each other And get it made overseas That's the word, don't you know From the guys that's running the show Let's be perfectly clear, boys and girls are still running the world Cults are still running the world